Hello everyone, hope you find yourself having a great day. I've got a quick tutorial for you. And today uh, we're going to be using Cinema 4D, R13. This is backwards compatible. And if you're using 14, 15 or new release 16, uh, it's going to work on any of these. So what we're going to do is create a dust simulation or fog or haze and uh, possibly water. It's straightforward, very easy to do. So let's get started. Where again I'm working in R13 and we're going to begin by creating a light and with this light we're going to go under its general settings and you're going to look for the visible light area and we're going to change it to volumetric and if we render this out to begin with you'll see we've got uh, a volumetric light very basic in its most uh, simple form we're going to march through some of these different tabs and apply some different settings let's take a look under details We'll very likely use details later when we possibly use a gradient color for this. Let's look under visibility. And fall off will be how diffused, how soft these edges are. We're going to leave it at 100% right now. But we are going to change our inner distance to say 50. And we're going to bump these outer distance up to about 800. Now what that is, is the inner distance is somewhat the core of the light and uh, the density and then the outer distance as the outer bounds of where you begin to have your fall off okay sample distance we're going to change this in a little bit and that's going to be helpful for us to uh, achieve a, a water look uh, brightness again that's uh, similar to brightening up under your basic tab uh, for your light its intensity and thus we're going to knock that guy right up to 100 okay Let's move on through shadow, whether or not to receive shadows. We're going to give it a shadow. We're going to up the sampling. That gives us much smoother edges, uh, more believable uh, shadows. Photometric, let's see what we've got there. Nothing we're going to adjust there. Caustics, we're going to leave that just as it is. Noise, we're under our noise tab. We're going to tell it to use both. Um, right now we've got a soft turbulence. We're going to change that to wavy turbulence. The velocity is the rate that this moves. Okay. The brightness, obviously the bright, brightness. And the contrast, we want that all the way up. That's where we're going to see our distinctions between a light and dark surface. Uh, visibility state. We're going to leave that just like it is. Wind, we're going to bump that up to 2. And the velocity, uh, this one's a very strong uh setting that you'll modify so small numbers give you great results so i'm going to bump that up just to one and just for fun i'm going to give each of these two so we can get more of a uh, turbulent windy effect if i go ahead and render this now you'll see now that we've got a little bit of variation we've got some darks absence areas of volume uh, metric data and light where we've got high levels of volumetric uh, data so if i were to render this I've got this set up to render at 1280 by 720. I'm going to render all frames. Uh, obviously not for this example, but if I were to complete this, I would render the entire sequence. And I'm going to save it just to a folder as PNG image sequence to my desktop. The PNG sequence is helpful if you, for some reason, some reason you need to stop, uh, you have a power loss or some failure. You can pick up and just continue rendering right where you left off for your uh, most recent sequence image has completed so i'm going to hit, go ahead and render this just just in brief so that we can get a look at some of the movement that we have happening here now keep in mind all these areas that are dark if we render this out in a png sequence with uh, alpha information will become transparent so you could take an effect and overlay your sequence on top of other footage uh maybe out a window maybe Nearby, you could uh, have this in a horizontal uh, aspect, and it would look like fog moving across the ground. So keep that in mind. If you render out with your alpha channels, you'll be able to see through this into another piece of footage beneath you. So you can see we've got a little bit of movement happening here. We can go in and make a few other settings, changes. Let's see if we can find our turbulence. Noise, let's see here. Velocity, visibility, 
tell you what, let's hop into our camera. We're going to create a camera here. Hop into it. You'll see by moving in and out that we're getting a different look. We almost have the uh, big netting effect happening on the outer side of this area here. But with our camera, like I said earlier, we can apply light. Move off axis here and light this up a little bit. We can tell that light to produce a shadow. Bump up its uh, resolution of touch. Get a look at this. And that gives us even a little bit more interest. Now what I found that I like to do is I'll, I'll come on almost perpendicular to it. I'll grab and drop in a null. I'll get myself a view from above. It, all, my entire scene is centered upon itself at its original origin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that camera and I'm going to drop it in the null. And this provides for an interesting effect. If on my timeline I take that null, keyframe it at keyframe 0, move to the end, rotate that null, and I'm going to rotate it just short of 360 degrees or yeah, th just short of 360 degrees maybe 359 or so I'll apply another keyframe and now what we've got is our, we've got our light our camera rotating around this and if I begin to render this guy obviously it'll take several frames to render around you're going to, going to get almost a floating dust cloud uh, scene. See here, if we zoom in with our camera, it's, it's much more effective. Alright, now we can take this as well and go into our light. What we can do with this under the general basic tab is our general tab is we can change this volumetric light. I think I got the wrong light there. Let me get our volumetric light. We can go in here and change our colors and generate a whole different look in regards to the light casting. There's another way can do, we can do this. We can change that back to its default white and if we go under visibility we can choose to use a gradient pick our start and end colors we'll start with black and with this we'll start with the teal color and if we render that you'll see that uh, we're getting almost a water look now if you were to allow this to render and process through multiple frames we'll be able to toggle with that but what you can do with this is ultimately create a texture apply that texture to a new material apply a bump and displacement map to it and then apply that texture to a plane and with that have your bump and displacement and get a real effective neat water uh, looking texture and if you see that I move this this is still having that hazy foggy look there's a trick that you can come into here and under your sample distance we can bump that up, let's say for example like 200. That's going to add a little bit more contrast to this, like you see we have here. And you can continue to play with that sample distance. Let's tell it 400. And as we increment up in this, we're going to get more and more contrast. Let me begin to render that. We'll let a few frames pass so that we can see some movement. And then I'll toggle between that, and you'll see that it has a nice water look. You can see where we get a little shimmer and blending over here. Just let that keep going for a minute. But as you jog through your footage, you can see that you're getting a nice, almost a glossy water effect with some depth. So just keep this in mind. I hope it's something you find helpful. And uh, maybe it's, you'll have a need for something like this in an upcoming project. Remember, save these out as textures, and uh, you'll be able to color grade them in After Effects or right within Cinema 4D. So if you like this, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.